Hello friends, welcome to the new Magister Klaus video. As usually, I come to you with an additional video on Invoking Demon series. And today we will have a very uh, interesting uh, subject or uh, person or spirit that I would like to discuss. Namely, the 29th uh, spirit of Ars Goetia, uh, Astaroth. Uh, in Ars Goetia, uh, she or he, uh, it's, it's, it's meant mostly as, as, as he, and it is uh, a spirit uh, as, that is considered as a mighty duke, if we believe in these hierarchies, and is one of the leading uh, powers of hell. Uh, of course, if we uh, do not count Lemmageddon, but we are looking for the sources of uh, uh, Grimoarum Verum. Uh, in Grimoarum Verum, Astaroth is uh, positioned even higher. She is one of the trinity of hell together with uh, Lucifer and Beelzebub. Uh, to speak about Astaroth, uh, I would like to go maybe not start with Goetia or with uh, Grimoarum Verum, but go much more deeper into the history of humankind. Because uh, if we try to uh, find where does this name Astaroth comes from, of course, immediately we find uh, that uh, she is or he is, or it is probably very closely related to the uh, early Hellenistic period or uh, Canaanic, uh, Canaanite godhood goddess Astarte. In Hellenistic period, she was also venerated as Astarte, but later on uh, uh, she was even more Hellenized and probably took the name of uh, Aphrodite. Uh, but uh, Astarte, even Astarte, which was very famous uh, goddess, uh, is not uh, the oldest uh, name for, 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 for Astaroth. Uh, if we go even deeper to the history, we find out that uh, probably Astarte uh, was just a renaming of an older ancient Mesopotamian goddess that was uh, worshipped in even in ancient Sumer and later by Akkadians and Babylonians. So if uh, in, uh, by Akkadians and Babylonians she was known as uh, Ishtar and uh, by Sumerians uh, like the oldest uh, name for her we suppose it's Inanna. Uh, if we want to find it, or we would like to specify it historically, she is one of the oldest uh, deities in the world. Uh, Inanna was worshipped in Sumer, in Sumer, in so-called Uruk period. Uh, we are speaking <laughs> 4,000 before current era, up to 3,100 before current era. So, so this uh, goddess will soon have uh, her 5,000 uh, year old birthday. Uh, we were able to find a lot of sources about Inanna, if I start with this older, uh, from, from, from this, this history of, of, of her from the, from the, from the old times. Uh, she's uh, famous by many uh, poems and legends about her, namely the legend or the famous uh, myth uh, Inanna's descent into underworld. Uh, I will come to it a little bit later. Also, she is named in the Epos of Gilgamesh and um, uh, other sources. Uh, she was uh, worshipped as a, as a goddess of fertility, even as of war and of love. Uh, her mm, earliest symbol uh, that we can find uh, was uh, is shown um, is was practically a solar disk and also eight-pointed star. Uh, uh, it is uh, interesting to say that uh, Inanna, even that I say she, uh, she was, uh, her actual gender is, uh, uh, I would say, like bipolar. Uh, there are no mentioning about her uh, as, uh, that she was uh, considered as a female or a male. So we speak really about this first initial androgen uh, 
uh, deity from which also later on uh, come uh, her, her like gender split. Uh, she had a twin brother, uh, her, uh, which name was Samarian Utu, and uh, in a later Akkadian periods uh, he was known as a god Shamash, uh, and his symbol was crescent moon. So we are probably, if you want to go a little bit uh, deeper into this allegory so she was a goddess of uh, or represented by the sun and her brother was represented by the moon so polar energies together uh, the planet however that is uh, uh, also uh, connected with her is Venus and we know that in the later periods and also in uh, much more later Venus is also attributed to Lucifer so uh, we can say that she is something like uh, this prototype of uh, or archetype of, of knowledge light uh, something that is beneficial to the to the humanity uh, if i i would like to speak a little bit about this famous uh, epos uh, in anna's uh, descent to the underworld uh, some modern astrologers astrologers believe that this is very closely related to the or is a reference to the astronomical phenomenon associated with the uh, retrograde of Venus. Uh, Venus, we know that uh, at this time uh, her uh, her movements appeared really like discontinuous to the, to those astrologers uh, from those times. So uh, ancient Sumerians even assumed that uh, the Venus is like a, that they are like two separate stars on the horizon, the morning and the evening star. So uh, the legend maybe according to the astrologers comes from that that she is like descending and ascending but it's also a larger allegory for a very old uh, myth about um, about this descent to the to the chaos this is a very uh, interesting poem with several variations. Uh, one of them speak about uh, her uh, her husband Dumus or Tamus that uh, actually is uh, taken by the demons into the underworld. Uh, some legends say that he was even like send him there. Later on, she mourns it and wants to return. But the famous poem uh, later on speaks also that Inanna was seeking to uh, develop her uh, magical powers even more. And she wants to. Uh, she wanted to take took over territory of her older sister Ereshkigal. Uh, Inanna, uh, like uh, uh, that, uh, she represented light and the powers of uh, of, of the day. Descends into the underworld, and uh, uh, it's um, she has to go through seven gates. And each, each gate, uh, there uh, she's stopped by uh, the gatekeeper, the demon Neti, uh, and he informs her that all when she wants to go uh, and take the throne of the nether uh, of the underworld, she in each gate she has to release some part of her clothing, and there are seven uh, seven uh, seven uh, magical things that she has. So she goes and put the necklace on, the earrings on, and, uh, and when she passes the seven gates, she's absolutely naked. This is the allegory that she is relieving her magical powers to go to the bottom of things. And uh, uh, of course, the legends say that it was the Ereshkigal strap because when uh, she was uh, without her magical items, she is then torn into pieces by the, the by the demons of the underworld. She is killed. But uh, uh, after three days, she is uh, reborn again. This is done mostly because other gods intervene and she is being helped and raised from the under, uh, underworld. But the demons don't want to release her and still demand her to return back. So she uh, sends her husband instead <laughs> because he was like not mourning her enough uh, and uh, her husband Dumuzit then gets uh, there. Uh, it means that allegorically even that we are ascending we should never forget about our shadow because our shadow always follows us. 
uh, this legend, if you see, uh, see it, this is this is repeating over and over in, in Hellenistic times. This is the legend of Persephone, that also uh, or uh, that also needs to go uh, to the underworld. Persephone is abduct abducted by Hades, uh, the god of the underworld. And uh, uh, as he wants to make her her queen, but her mother Demeter pleads other gods to uh, that she is released uh, from the underworld, and uh, they send uh, a diplomatic god to to discuss this with uh, with Hades, so-called Helios, uh, that, that news about the abduction later on, of course, explains this uh, to the Demeter and Zeus. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Persephone eats the fruit of the underworld and uh, even that she's released from the underworld, uh, she has to uh, always uh, return for a time back. It means again that once that you taste the shadow, it is, uh, always stays with you, it's part of you. Uh, and uh, again, this is like the death and rebirth uh, in modern myths, in, um, in uh, practically in Christianity, uh, as it is said, nothing is new under the sun. Uh, Jesus, after crucifixion, uh, descends into hell and after three days he is reborn again and he goes to the heaven. So uh, this myth of, uh, of initiation, of, of, of light that comes down to be uh, reborn again, uh, even in, uh, if we speak about, for example, uh, about Jewish uh, uh, mythology or, 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 or Jewish uh, esoteric uh, Kabbalistic uh, learnings, uh, uh, in Kabbalah, there is a term of Shekhinah, which is like female uh, attribute of God. Through Shekhinah, there, uh, this is the final emanation of all Sephirots, that everything is born through the female, in the, in the real world is born from the female energy of God. So uh, also this uh, myth about Inanna, it's like that, uh, or, or Persephone, that, uh, because it was also related to the change of the uh, spring to, to, to summer and the change of the year cycles. So life is, uh, begins through this rebirth, this cyclic uh, uh, changing of, of uh, this rotation of planets, changing of the, uh, of, of the year uh, periods and also uh, in humanity, our spiritual de through descent, we ascend again. Her newer name, Astarte, is like a Hellenized form, as I mentioned, of the original um, ancient Near um, Semitic name of Ashtart or Atart. Uh, this, by this name, she is also known in the in the Bible. Uh, Hebrew Bible uh, names uh, Ashtoreth uh, in uh, as a principal goddess of Sidonians. By Sidonians they mean Phoenicians. Uh, it was a, a nation in, in Canaanite uh, times. It is also uh, mentioned in the Bible that uh, Ashtarot was, uh, had a dedicated city. Uh, it was called uh, Ashtarot Karnaim. Uh, it was a city in the land of so-called Bashan, near the river of Jordan. This is named, uh, this is mentioned in Book of Genesis in 14.5 uh, and also Book of Joshua, uh, Joshua 12.4. Uh, uh, the name uh, when translated uh, from, uh, from Hebrew means like uh, Ashtarot of the horns. It means like that horns is a symbolic of the mountain peaks. And uh, Ashtaroth was uh, close related to fertility. Uh, later on, uh, this biblical Ashtaroth is also named in first uh, Kabbalistic text and later on even in the medieval grimoires. So the name is changing in the, in the meantime. And a very famous book, uh, occult book in the medieval times, 
this Astarte Ashtarot is changed in the book of Abramelin uh, into Astarot. Uh, 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 however, of course, due to uh, impact of Christianity, uh, this, uh, this goddess of, of planets, of, of Venus, of, of change, the changing of life cycles is practically deformed into the uh, entity of a fallen angel, of, of an entity that is uh, nor woman, uh, uh, but it's a male or androgynous, uh, which maybe is not so far from the truth, because uh, as, as we mentioned, this uh, initial Inanna was also like uh, bipolar or, or maybe, maybe in English, uh, I would say that she's like gender neutral. And uh, mm, uh, there are also other books uh, later on that na name her, mostly these occult books like Grimoireum Verum, and later on, of course, uh, Lemegeton uh, and Ars Goetia, Pseudomonarchia Demonum in 1577, and uh, of course, uh, also The Lesser Key of Salomon, where uh, Astaroth takes the place of the 29th uh, Goetia uh, spirit. So, uh, I, I showed this book for several times, but uh, we can see uh, here that this is illustrated Goetia, a very nice book, uh, also with the pictures, with the sigil of Astaroth. And uh, um, uh, before I will speak about it also, uh, I would like to maybe name also, in these books she's named, uh, she's identified as a, as a fallen angel. And what is interesting is her sigil. Mostly, uh, I don't mean the sigil from the Grimoireum Verum that I am showing at the beginning of the video, but the more known uh, Astaroth seal according to the Lesser Key of Solomon. So I'm, I'm showing it uh, here. Uh, this, uh, if you look at it, it is, it is uh, a pentagram uh, that uh, is uh, crossed by horizontal and vertical lines. And uh, I was thinking about this also, uh, that uh, practically what is the meaning of this? It's a little bit different sigil from those that we can see in, in uh, a lesser key of Solomon. So practically pentagram should be um, identified as, as a human, as an Adam Kadmon. Right? Sometimes by pentagram, it's, it's not turn, it's, it's classical pentagram, we understand the symbol of humanity. So it's something that, and these lines, I would say that they mean like uh, ceiling or, or something that is uh, a prison. So, so that the humanity is, the, it means Eden something that is like uh, sent away from the from the garden of eden the human is uh, uh, outcasted from the initial source so uh, i think this sigil is very interesting it means something that was like uh, 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 lost yeah? even this descent into the underworld this death of an era of something and later on this rebirth it means uh, translation to the material plane. Why I'm saying this? Because sometimes Astaroth, uh, during these uh, invocations or even evocations, uh, is um, like uh, sometimes very like complaining about the change of things that uh, she or it uh, in, in, uh, is uh, like saying sometimes this history of things that that uh, there was uh, that uh, we that that uh, this uh, this fall is uh, something that is um, not right or that she has fallen because of the injustice from higher deity or something, from this eternal sin, or yeah, it's it's very strange. But uh, sometimes she is mentioning these histories of of, of, of things. Uh, I will better read a little bit about it because her description is really interesting, a little bit cryptic. You know, the 29th spirit is Astaroth. 
He is a mighty, strong duke and appears in the form of an heartful angel riding an infernal beast like a dragon and carrying in his right hand a viper. So you see that the uh, initial uh, as Ishtar Inanna from, from this uh, androgynous uh, deity uh, and also Astarte, uh, which was really like uh, more female-like, is transformed into demonic entity that is however carrying some symbols like a viper, like this snake, like this. Uh, if you have seen my video about Leviathan, I was uh, mentioning uh, a sect, Gnostic sect of Ophids that were venerating snake because through the snake they think that the snake made, uh, uh, made uh, humanity descent into the material plane and that's a good thing because from that descent uh, the humanity, uh, humanity understands uh, themselves like that this this cognition starts and they can return back so there is a metaphysical idea that uh, the snake was venerated by them and she is veering this viper so we see we see this uh, in her her sigil these bars that are like uh, closing garden of eden and again this viper and now it continues very interesting interestingly do must in no wise let him approach too near unto thee lest he do thee damage by his noise and breath Wherefore the magician must hold the magical ring near his face and that will defend him. Yes. So what is meant by this full breath? <laughs> it is truth. Truth can be sometimes painful, but uh, uh, to understand the truth and to understand the, 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 the cryptical meanings, because I, I also feel that Astrid is uh, she, she is a spirit that talks. Some are working more with uh, imaginations and so on, but Astrid sometimes like to explain. Maybe by visions, maybe that I find the source later on, or, uh, but uh, uh, to understand sometimes what she's trying to say, because she's also enigmatic. You, you, uh, uh, you have to wear this silver ring. What is this silver ring? Is the symbol of the magi is the symbol of knowledge someone who approaches such old entity full of knowledge must possess the ability to analyze otherwise he is misled so it uh, and he uh, ends in error so i would translate it like in this way it's really allegorical um, he gives true answers of things past, present, and to come, and can discover all secrets. He will declare writingly how the spirits fell, if desired, and the reason of his own fall. He can make men wonderfully knowing in all liberal sciences. He rules 40 legions of spirits. His seal is, as shown, uh, uh, which we do as a laman before thee, or else he will not appear nor, nor yet obey thee. Uh, by laman, by this symbol uh, that we wear uh, like uh, on our chest, um, it means um, it shouldn't be said like literally, although it's, it's good to have, <laughs> have it. it. It means that you must be presented to her as someone worthy of presence. And also many practitioners say that um, she prefers to be invoked by her older name as Astarte or Inanna or Ishtar or, uh, or uh, but not as Astaroth. Uh, small minority of um, of practitioners were able to even invoke her in this Astaroth demonic form. It haven't, never happened to me. Uh, I was also part of the majority. To me, in her visions, she was uh, presented even in a female form. Probably my subconscious uh, uh, created this, this image of Inanna. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I felt her like Ishtar. Uh, and in a female form. 
Uh, she is one of the rare spirits that I uh, had uh, uh, even like feeling of um, sexual connection. Yeah, so it was a really erotic dream which I had with her. It's rare. I, I do not have it with, with 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 spirits normally, but it was like that. And uh, she is really, uh, I think. Beside this knowledge, these understandings of, 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 of myth and so on, as, as a goddess of fertility, she is very good also with sexual rights, love rights, but I mean something more oriented toward, uh, toward long-lasting relationships. It's not this Asmodeus crazy thing that you want to go uh, and have, have, uh, to the bar and uh, to be attractive for one night and these kind of things. She might help you to understand things that uh, how to make or what you are doing wrong in your relationships for a, a longer uh, a longer period of time so so she works also in this way but we can't forget also this duality that uh, she is also uh, uh, let's call it spirit or demon and she can command also ktonic and necromantic powers as she's so closely related to the underworld so for those that are looking for these kind of operations Astaroth can be of help even when we for example uh, there is a nice poem uh, from this uh, Akkadic uh, version uh, translated to English uh, of her dress to the underworld where uh, she's uh, approaching the, the gatekeeper first time to to that she wants to uh, go to the underworld and take Eresh Kigal's uh, kingdom, she says this to the gatekeeper. If you do not open the gate for me to come in, I shall smash the door and shatter the bolt. I shall smash the doorpost and overturn the doors. I shall raise up the dead and they shall eat the living. And the dead shall outnumber the living. So, uh, although she is a, a deity of fertility, uh, of, 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 of summer, she is also the deity of winter. There is always this polarity, this, 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 this shadow and this light. And that's uh, really interesting and fascinating about Ishtar. From my, uh, you say I say Ishtar, but uh, you, you know that by the name uh, we can say also Astaroth. Uh, from the modern times, of course, as Christianity came, it, it, uh, subs, uh, it, it took over these, these, uh, these cults of Astarte, of, of Aphrodite. And uh, what is interesting, and I sometimes feel it, that uh, Astaroth can be connected with uh, uh, the Lady of Sorrows, the uh, Holy Mary. You see it that for, uh, that uh, Christianity uh, Christianity was trying to take this myth of, uh, of 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 a female energy, female goddess into the cult. So we can say that she is the Lady of Sorrows. Why Lady of Sorrows? Why? Why? Because we know from the Christianity that these sorrows were seven, uh, the, yeah, the crucifixion of Christ and so on. So, so she, the, the, we, we can see this heart pierced with seven swords or, or uh, this famous uh, symbol of the, of the Lady of Sorrows. But don't forget that uh, this, is, uh, this can be connected with this old myth of the Inanas descent into underworlds. Seven sorrows, seven gates seven pieces of clothing that she had to put away to become who she is. And also, uh, in modern Christianity, Lady of Sorrows is ascended, Asumpta, so she goes, uh, the Mary goes into heaven after she goes through these seven uh, painful moments in her life. We can see this history and this myth repeating over and over. We can see this feminine, uh, goddess or that is still repeating up to modern times. 
Uh, by the way, uh, Lady of Sorrows is again closely related with uh, another modern, uh, or not so modern, but uh, living uh, uh, saint or living uh, living uh, uh, tradition of uh, Santissima Muerte. But about that maybe on our next uh, video or video that will come in upcoming weeks about Santa Muerte, which is really an interesting as well. So I hope uh, I gave you some uh, thoughts to ponder <laughs> on. Uh, I believe you must uh, or some of you already worked with uh, Astarot, Ishtar, Astarte and uh, I will be very happy about your comments and uh, thoughts about this and I am looking on uh, to meet you again on another videos of mine and if you want please uh, uh, give a comment uh, in YouTube or uh, you can also visit my Patreon uh, site for support uh, to support me it helps me to create more interesting I hopefully hopefully interesting content for you thank you very much and enjoy your day